Good morning, uh, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you are. Welcome, everybody, to today's webinar on Terrasoft's C++, C++ Tests, Static Analysis Extension for Visual Studio Code Editor. My name is Ricardo Camacho. I'm a Senior Technical Marketing Manager, and I'm joined by my good friend and colleague, Miroslav Sielinski, uh, Product Manager for our Safety Critical Solutions. We are very excited. We are very excited to share with you today some um, uh, great information and content that we have on our extensions to the very popular Visual Studio Code Editor. Uh, but before we jump into the presentation, let's go over some housekeeping with uh, Zoom. Okay, first, uh, everybody's microphone has been muted. However, if you um, have questions, please enter them into the Q&A dialog. You should see the Q&A button in your Zoom control panel. And also, if you run into any technical problems like not being able to hear audio during the presentation, please use the chat channel. There, you can connect with one of our team members who is ready to respond. Uh, so let's run through a quick check to make sure Everybody can hear me. Uh, would someone click the raise hand button uh, inside your chat channel if you can hear me? All right, uh, perfect. Thank you. Okay, it looks like uh, we are ready to go. Go to the next slide. There we go. All right. Now, on today's agenda, uh, Miroslav is going to start the presentation by discussing evolving trends that are noticeable out in the field that are making productivity impacts to our overall workflows. For example, the lightweight Visual Studio Code Editor uh, with its marketplace full of extensions, which uh, continues to proliferate the software development industry. And there are other tool chains that uh, Miro's Law will touch on which continue to enhance our workflows, making developers and testers more productive. Some of these um, productivities are being borrowed from the enterprise IT space like containers and virtualization and more. We um, also have a very special uh, treat for you today. Miro's Law is going to give us a live demonstration so you'll get to see our solutions in action, and very important also is how easy our tools are to deploy. So this is uh, really very uh, exciting stuff. Okay, let's start uh, by asking uh, Miroslaw, our product manager and friend, to give us a brief summary of some of the modernizations that are happening in the software development industry and how Parasoft is contributing uh, to it. Thank you, Ricardo. Hello, everyone. Um, today, we're going to focus on the latest release of the Parasoft CC++ test 2020.1 and the brand new static analysis extension for the Visual Studio Code. Our discussion will be focused on C and C++, especially in embedded and safety critical space. But I would like to mention that we have also uh, released Parasoft.test static analysis extension for Visual Studio Code, which supports C Sharp development. Now, before I demonstrate our extension for the Visual, Visual Studio Code, as Ricardo mentioned, I would like to discuss some of the trends we see in the industry and try to answer the question why lightweight tools such as the uh, VS Code are becoming so popular in the embedded and safety critical space where most of the C and C++ code is now developed. So in the last years, many of the teams noticed that they are no longer able to develop their products and meet the market expectations using the tools and methodologies from the past. Ubiquitous connectivity of embedded systems and AI-based algorithms cause the size and complexity of code bases to explode. And because of this, 
We are observing now a huge changes in the development environments, methodologies, and the workflows. The embedded and safety critical space, which was traditionally slower than enterprise IT for accepting novelties because of prevalent certifications and audits, is now under the pressure to modernize. Growing embedded teams started to look into the methodologies and tools their colleagues from enterprise IT sector were using for years and, and they started to adopt agile feature branch development model, CICD, containers, and all these lightweight tools that are capable of dealing with the large code bases. Of course, these trends do not affect all the teams. There are and there will be products which can be developed by a small team using old style approach. But in general, the pressure to modernize will be growing, especially for the large teams developing, um, developing complex functionalities such as AI powered ADAS systems in the automotive. And from our observations, we see a growing acceptance for, for Linux and open source tools. Git, CMake, Jenkins, GNU compilers, um, LLVM compilers, Docker containers, these are now bread and butter for most of the teams. Whenever a specific tool is not critical from the safety and security perspective, teams prefer to select open source solutions because these tools are proven to work very well in the large projects and deal with the large code bases. So um, Git, Jenkins, Docker, CMake, and of course, um, the Visual Studio Code are all good examples here. For the tools which are critical for the functional safety, security, and the certification, teams still prefer the commercial solutions and having a real vendor that can support them with the rollout, tool qualification, certification, on C or simply with uh, bug fixing. So what are the expectations that dev teams have now for the development environments? With the complexity and the variety of the tool chains, teams try to avoid traditional setups where all the tools are installed directly at the developer's machine. This is becoming too expensive uh, to maintain and with all the dependencies um, between the tools basically too fragile. Teams want to be able to get up and running with their tool chains for the specific project in the similar way they get the source code. Just pull the configured tool chain from the repository and, and be ready. And containers are very handy here. Uh, we had an interesting webinar recently which discussed how containers simplify the management of the tool chains. If you didn't get a chance to see it, uh, please register to, to, to see the recording. Um, other thing is that teams also prefer now the tools that can be configured with plain text files or with human readable formats like JSON or, or Java properties, which can be stored together with the code and if needed, uh, to be modified with automated scripts. Complex GUI-based configurations stored in proprietary formats are, we may say, the, the song of the past. Expectation is take a new machine, uh, possibly a VM, uh, just with the operating system, check out the code in configurations, pull the containers with your tool chains, and be ready in, in minutes. And last but not least, the critical expectation now is that the testing tools and processes are fully automated and well integrated with the workflows and with the, with the other tool chains. So create a feature branch, develop the code, test your code locally, run more extensive tests in the CI CD, create the pull request and be done. Static code analysis, coding standard compliance, and unit testing need to be a part of these workflows. And Visual Studio Code fit this picture very well. It's got multiple advantages over the traditional feature-rich 
or we may say uh, feature heavy IDEs that make it a great match for these modern workflows. Paras of tools support integration with the traditional IDEs like, um, like Eclipse and Eclipse based embedded IDEs, Visual Studio and, and collection of, of other smaller embedded IDEs. But in the last years, we see the growing popularity of the Visual Studio code. When talking to our customers, we frequently hear that Eclipse or Visual Studio are becoming problematic for large code bases, which are now very common in the industry. Both Eclipse and Visual Studio, they offer great features and um, advanced functionalities. We get um, excellent support for debugging and accurate IntelliSense or code completion, however you want to call it. But these IDEs are heavy. It may take, for example, a couple of minutes to start the large Eclipse workspace. And the navigation between the components of the workspace may generate a lot of frustration. We see that, um, again, and this is based on the interactions with our customers, that in some projects which contain millions um, of lines of code, developers even prefer to use Emacs or, or Vim instead of heavy IDEs. And VS Code places itself somewhere in between plain editors like, like Emacs, Vim, or Notepad++, and heavy IDEs like Eclipse or full-blown Visual Studio. It's lightweight and fast. At the same time, all the essential functionalities like the code completion and debugging are supported in the reasonable way. Code completion may, may not always be that accurate and um, you may be missing some advanced debugging capabilities, but for say 80% of your daily activities, you get what you need and it works fast, facil facilitating your, your dynamic development pace. And the crucial thing is that VS Code has an open architecture. It is easy to extend and offers a marketplace full of plugins, such as the Paras of C++ test, which enriches the capabilities of, of these editors. And with, um, with our extension for the static analysis, we wanted to keep the spirit of this ecosystem. Um, so our extension is easy to install, easy to configure, and intuitive um, to use. So I will go now through the uh, free representative workflows with the Visual Studio Code and the C++ test static analysis extension, trying to highlight the important elements of the setup. Let's start with the uh, simplest, most fundamental workflow. Here we can see the setup that is typical for developers working locally on their machines. Developers pull the code from the Git repository to their local drives and they develop the code or work on the bug uh, fixing using the VS Code. On each modification, the local build, build process starts, which uh, typically includes the static analysis and possibly also some small amount of unit tests. With the Paras of C++ test extension, static analysis is very easy to integrate into this, um, very easy to integrate into these workflows. Let me bring back the slide deck. Um, all important actions such as running the analysis, reviewing results, viewing documentation, or suppressing the findings can be done from within the VS Code. What is important from the process point of view um, for this kind of workflow is that developers expect immediate feedback for the changes they introduced. So the response from the static analysis should be as fast as possible. For this kind of setups, we recommend enabling the limited amount of static analysis checkers without the checkers that work on the project scope and take the long time to report feedback. This way we are sure that, for example, 80% of the problems will be found immediately after the code was created 
um, and the cost of our process will be low because of that. And the remaining static analysis checkers will be executed in the CICD pipeline, um, providing the feedback a little bit later to the developers. In this workflow, the developer can start the analysis for the files that are currently worked on directly from the, from the VS Code. And the results are reported back in the editor for convenient review and remediation. It makes the workflow smooth and efficient, and I will be demonstrating it in the second part of our webinar. The second workflow I would like to discuss is for the remote development. Even though the diagram looks uh, very different from the previous one, from the user perspective, this is a very similar situation to the previous one. What we have here is the developer using the local installation of the VS Code, uh, for example, uh, Linux or Windows machine, connecting to the remote server for the development. The source code is pulled um, from the repository to the remote server. Um, the build tool chain, uh, like compiler, uh, build engine, and the static analysis tools are all located in the remote server. Developer uses VS Code as a um, quote, quote, thin client to access the development tools installed on the remote machine. So user can easily build the code with the remote compiler um, and also perform the static analysis. And this is a great function, this, and this great functionality is possible thanks to the remote SSH VS Code extension. The remote SSH extension lets you use any machine with SSH server um, as your development environment. This can greatly simplify uh, development and, and troubleshooting. You can use uh, Mac, you can use Windows, and still be able to develop, for example, on the Linux platform. And any combination of these operating systems um, is supported here. And this sounds very interesting, especially now in the current situation where most of us need to work from home. With this kind of setup, you don't need a specialized powerful machine. You can use any computer you have available at home and connect to your development host in the office. And the great thing is that our extension for the static analysis was designed in the way that it can be also used in this kind of workflows. Static analysis can be executed on the, on the remote machine, but results will be immediately present in the local VS Code client. So you can browse the results, fix the problems or suppress violations directly in, the, in your local VS Code instance. And um, again, this is something we'll be demonstrating in the, in the second part of the webinar. In this kind of workflows, um, we still expect the static analysis to return the quick feedback because developers are, are interested to see the results as soon as possible at the time when the code is, is, is created. So uh, more advanced uh, static analysis checks will be still performed in the, in the CI CD pipeline. Great advantage of the VS Code and Paras of Static Analysis extension is that it seamlessly bridges the gap between your local machine and the remote development environment, giving you very same experience as um, in the most typical local development workflows. And finally, um, we have the CI CD. Um, in this workflow, developers are working on their local machines, which are prepared and configured for the development uh, using, for example, uh, Docker containers. Developers work on the code locally. And then, and then at some point, they push their code to the repository, which triggers the uh, CI CD pipeline. And CI server executes the, the, the pipelines, which include building the code, but also running the static analysis and perhaps unit tests, integration tests, and automated system level tests. 
from the static analysis perspective, um, this, this gives us a possibility to perform more thorough code scans um, with the richer set of static analysis checkers, since the CI servers are usually very powerful machines and we can expect that even in-depth static analysis will be performed in the reasonable time. And result of um, these testing activities, such as uh, static analysis or unit testing, are sent to Parasoft DTP, which is a central reporting system and aggregates the data from multiple testing practices and correlates them with um, the information from the source code repository and requirements management systems. Um, to simplify the illustration here, uh, SCM and RMS are not ref reflected on this diagram. Um, great functionality of DTP is that it enables dedicated compliance reports uh, for the coding standards such as MISRA, AutoZAR, CERT, CWE, or, or OWASP, and it is a great help for achieving compliance. Developer can Developers can access these interactive reports um, with, um, with, with charts using a um, regular browser, um, but they can also download the findings directly to their IDE for the local review and remediation. The functionality to import results uh, from DTP to the VS Code um, is coming in, in our nearest release, but um, Right now, users can download the results generated at the CI level to their VS Code instances using import results file functionality, which I will be showing in a minute during the demonstration. So to summarize uh, CI CD discussion, from the static analysis perspective, in this kind of the workflow, we are interested in performing deep and thorough analysis with the complete set of checkers and be able to present results back to developers for remediation. Developers can check the results and interactive reports directly in the DTP and see their progress with compliance. Uh, but for code level analysis and remediation, they will want to import the results, uh, static analysis findings, to the VS Code and act on findings inside their favorite development environment. And um, this concludes our short journey through a selected but hopefully representative workflows. Ricardo, back to you. Okay, I see we may have some problems with, with connection, so I will, I will continue. So um, we are at the demonstration part now, and um, for the demonstration, I would like to show you a simplified setups for each of the workflows uh, we were discussing. In the first part, um, we will focus on the functionality of the Parasoft static analysis extension for the VS Code. I will walk you through the selected features of the extension. In the second part, we will see how our extension flies in the remote development setups. And finally, we will go through the simple example of the CI-CD workflows where the results of the automated static analysis scans are downloaded to the Visual Studio Code at the developer's desktops. So let's start with the first demonstration. I will focus on, um, on the local workflow with static analysis. So let me stop the presentation mode. And for the demonstration, I will open the Visual Studio Code. 
So this is the VS Code installed on my um, Windows machine. Here I have in my workspace, I have my project. This is the code I develop. And let's say that um, for this code, I want to implement static analysis. I want to achieve MISRA compliance. What do I do? Well, um, I can go to the marketplace and search for MISRA, for example. And the first thing and the only thing that appears is uh, Parasoft CC++ test static analysis extension for the VS Code. So I can install it, which takes only a second, and I'm almost good to go. To complete the installation, I need to do one more simple step. I need to install Parasoft C++ test standard, which is the static analysis engine which interacts with the extension. And the extension uh, gives me a gentle hint to do it. I can click here to learn more, uh, where I have a description of the remaining steps. Uh, I can check the um, I can check the website here. You can request the free trial of Parasoft C++ test standard and download it um, uh, to, to finalize the installation. Installation of Parasoft C++ test standard is trivial. All you need to do after downloading the distribution is to unpack it to the directory of your choice and drop the license file um, to this directory to complete the installation. I've done all these steps um, already, so we are almost good to go. Um, after the installation, um, the VS Code status bar um, contains the quick start menu, which will help us to um, finalize the configuration. So once we click the quick start menu, we'll be shown a couple of simple options and um, we can finalize the configuration. The first thing we need to set is the point the extension to the installation of C++ test standard. Uh, so by clicking here, we can point the, the extension to the place where we unzip the C++ test standard. So this is done. Then we need to select the test configuration. So the collection of static analysis checkers we want to use to scan our code. Um, so let's say um, I mentioned MISRA, that I want to test my code against MISRA. And the last thing is um, we need to select compiler configuration. Basically, we need to tell the tool uh, what compiler we are using for building our project. In my case, this is GCC, um, GCC 9 compiler 64 bits. So I'm selecting it. And that's it. And we're done. We can start the analysis. So I will click here to analyze um, entire project. And what is happening right now, um, the, the extension started the analysis process. Uh, we see the progress on the, on the output uh, view. Um, you see that some violations were already found. And after the analysis is done, all the static analysis findings, all the problems um, located in the code are loaded to the problems view. So we can now easily browse through them, um, analyze and take um, appropriate, um, appropriate actions. Um, findings are also um, uh, displayed um, as the, as the uh, drop downs in the editor. So if you hover on these underlined um, uh, locations in the code, you can see the you can see the, the 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 information about the static analysis results. So let's take a quick look on a couple of um, couple of examples. Um, let's say that um, we want to um, I don't know. We can search here uh, by the phrase from the um, from the um, reported finding. Um, so we can double click here and see what is the problem reported here. And um, C++ tells, tells us that the expression of the essential, essentially signed type is assigned to an object with the essentially unti unsigned type. So if we, if we don't understand um, what this problem is about, we can easily open the rule documentation. We can put it uh, side by side 
um, every rule is documented uh, with the description. It includes also the uh, example of the violations and includes information uh, what are the typical repair actions. So all this information is available here. We can also look for um, some other problems. Um, I'm using now the, the ID of the, of the specific MISRA guidelines. Um, let's take at this example. Uh, record is check for null after being the reference. And with this type of findings, which span across, um, which describe problems that, that, that span across many um, functions, possibly even files, we get the full information with a convenient trace, which shows us step by step why given problem um, appears. And here um, we have um, the first element of the path where we have a query function. Um, in this, inside the query function, we have the, the referencing of the, the record variable, then it's uh, returned, and then it's being checked for null, which is, uh, which is not a good practice. And also here we have another example of a violation, possibly accessing array timer records are out of bounds at index minus one. So again, we have a, we have a path. Um, so uh, we can see that start of the path, this is in an init timer function. Uh, we, have a, we have a loop and from inside this loop, uh, delete timer record function is called. Uh, the loop runs from zero. So the first invocation of delete timer record will be with a zero parameter. And if we go inside, we can see that we have another loop. And in this loop, we are initializing the index to the function parameter minus one, which for zero will be minus one. And then we are trying to access the, the timer records um, L, uh, array using this index, which will be minus one, which may be a problem. Um, we have also other options here. Um, once we analyze given violation, and for example, um, we don't agree with it, uh, or we have a good reason to to uh, to accept this violation in the specific place, we can easily suppress it uh, using a drop down action from the problems view. And um, I can add a comment why this is acceptable. Um, referencing some permit and uh, C++, the, the, the extension will add, will automatically generate appropriate comment in the code, which will suppress this violation from appearing in the subsequent, um, subsequent sessions, analysis sessions. So uh, this concludes the first demonstration for the, the basic uh, uh, workflow from, for the local development workflow. Um, let me quickly bring, bring back the slide deck um, to quickly discuss what we are going to see in the second part of the demonstration. Uh, in, in, in this demonstration, I will show you um, how you can use um, VS Code and C++ test extension for the remote development uh, setups. Uh, here we will have a Windows machine um, with um, local installation of VS Code, um, which will be connecting to the remote um, Linux server, which sits uh, in my office. And this server is configured for the development. I have all the compilers I need there. Uh, I have CMake, um, and I also have Parasoft C++ test for static analysis. So let's see how we can implement this kind of workflow with the, with the VS Code. So I will start Visual Studio Code one more time. Um, this shows my local workspace, and this is not what I want to do. I will now use um, remote SSH to connect to a host, and this is my, uh, my uh, development machine in the office. So a new instance of VS Code is, um, is started and it asks me for the password to connect to the local to the remote server. 
And now I'm connected. Let me expand. I can open the folder with my source code and, um, and this is the remote file system. So I'm pointing to the directory where the source code is located. I need to type the password one more time. And I'm connected. I'm sitting on my, um, on my Windows laptop um, where I don't have any tools, development tools installed, but I'm connected to the remote server and, um, and C++ test is available there. So um, I can run the static analysis on the code. And as you can see, this is executed on Linux. So it's completely transparent for me that I'm working with the remote development host. The build process is managed, can be, can be managed by the VS code and, and the static analysis, as you can also see, is fully automated. It's executed on the, on the remote host. And, um, and as soon as the analysis is done, I see all the results. So I can browse, I can review, um, I can suppress. All without having the development environment installed on my, on my local host. So that's the, that's the second workflow I wanted to present. And again, let me bring the slide deck back to quickly introduce the third part of the demonstration. We will be talking about the uh, CI CD workflows um, and I will present a, a subset of the of the workflow here. Um, I will go um, I will start with uh, modifying the code um, on my local um, developer development laptop. Then I will push the code to the Git server, which will trigger the uh, CI, CI CD pipeline. Um, and um, in my case, uh, I'm not using Jenkins. I will be using um, CI CD based on the, on the GitLab. And in my pipeline, uh, the code will be built. Uh, static analysis will be, will be performed. And after the static analysis, uh, which will be performed with the extended configuration for in-depth um, code analysis. I will be able, I will, I will show you how to download the results to my local ins installation, to my local instance of the VS Code um, for the um, analysis of the findings. So um, let's go back to the, to the VS Code. Okay, let's close the remote setup. Okay, just a minute, and uh, now I will open my local directory. This is again um, the source code on my on my laptop, and uh, now let's say I'm working on the on the new feature. I will implement a piece of code. Let's say uh, that's something simple. Uh, A plus B, nothing really sophisticated. I'm done. Um, I'm saving it, and this is this is something I want to commit. So I'm staging the file, and um, 
working on the feature xxx that's that's my commit and I'm, I'm pushing my changes and now the code was was commit and um, let me move now to the to my CI CD as I mentioned uh, this setup is based on the on the GitLab this is one of the one of the examples and I can go to the pipelines and I see that my commit triggered the uh, the, the action pipeline is already running. So um, I can enter here. I can check the static analysis. I see that static analysis were, was already executed. Some violations were reported. And again, um, in this, um, this workflow, we assume that this is more photo configuration, which contains more checkers, which are executed on, the, on our powerful uh, CI server. And, um, and we can um, drill down here uh, for the static analysis. Uh, we can browse the, the reports. We can browse the report and we, we can download the report XML um, to our um, local drive. And now it is available for us To be downloaded to the to the VS Code. I will use command palette right now to see all the actions that are supported by C++ test, um, and I will select load results from file, and I will pick the latest one that was that was generated. And with this action being done, um, I can see all the findings that were generated uh, during the um, CI um, in locally um, on, my, on my laptop. So I can work with them. I can analyze the code and fix or suppress. And, um, and this concludes the demonstration part. So uh, let me bring back the slide deck. And can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, Ricardo. Thanks. So back to you. <laughs> Sorry for that. Lost the uh, audio on, on, on that. Anyways, that was actually very impressive, uh, Miros Law. You, you actually painted a very clear picture of how our solutions are seam seamlessly integrated and how uh, they can support these, these three workflows that you actually uh, mentioned and how this can work in, in uh, your organization uh, for the folks out there. Anyways, uh, Miroslav, can you also do a quick recap? Uh, sure. So uh, we have discussed how the growing complexity of the systems and the growing size of code bases drive the evolution of the development um, of the development tool chains and workflows. Um, we have discussed which features are now expected from the tool chains. Tools need to be fast, customizable, adaptable, and lightweight to be manageable with containers. And finally, we have seen how Visual Studio Code with Parasoft C++ test extension for the static analysis fits into this picture. Our discussion was focused on the C and C++ part of Parasoft portfolio, uh, but let me repeat one more time that uh, the same VS Code extension is available for the Parasoft um, dot test. And uh, with this being said, um, I believe we have reached uh, the end of the presentation. Ricardo, back to you. Okay, let's go to the next slide here. Come on, there, oh, not too many. Maybe you can click back for me, somehow it's not. Okay. <clears throat> okay, thank you. So um, yeah, let's make sure you know where to find Parasoft's uh, extension for VS Code. Uh, here's the uh, link and a barcode for uh, Microsoft's Marketplace for C++. And so you can go ahead and try out the C++ extension. Or as uh, Merrick mentioned, we also support uh, C Sharp, so look for .NET. 
uh, by going to the marketplace. And what you're going to find in there is um, a lot of prerequisites and uh, getting started instructions. So in no time, you're going to be building safer and more secure applications with your uh, static analysis solution that we offer. Okay, yeah, can you go to the next slide for me? Yes. Thank you. So let's uh, go ahead and open things up for questions. Let me take a quick look here. Um, okay, uh, Merrick, uh, for, for, we have a question here. Can I customize the environment to support my own defined rules? Uh, yes, this is supported. Uh, you can, um, the, the, the configuration, um, you can extend existing configurations. Uh, the tool is shipped with the collection of, um, we call them test configurations, which are basically a, a pre-selected uh, checkers, uh, like for MISRA compliance or CERT compliance. Uh, so you can, you can edit these configurations and you can enable additional checkers. In total, Parasoft C++ test supports more than 4,000 different static analysis checkers. So you can pick and choose uh, whichever are right for you, uh, probably in addition to the, to the compliance standards such as, um, such as MISRA or, or, or AutoZAR or CERT. And also um, C++ test supports creation of the custom checkers. So if you need to scan your code against uh, your specific um, code patterns that are, that are typical for, for your libraries or your projects, you can create these checkers or you can edit, customize existing checkers and include them in your static analysis scams. Okay, so I will, I will continue with questions. Let me see what we have here. We have a couple of more. Um, what is your plan with integrating unit testing into VS Code? Um, okay, so unit testing is support by, um, by C++ Test Professional, which is available as a plugin to um, Eclipse and Visual Studio. Car our current release of Visual Studio Code extension, which is different from Visual Studio, uh, does not support unit testing yet. But given how quickly um, this, this editor is growing, this is definitely something we are considering for one of our future releases. Okay, another question. Um, do you plan to support VS Code extension for Java? Um, yes, in general, we plan to support um, VS Code extension for Parasol JTS, which is a, a, a code quality tool for, for Java. We do not have uh, yet a um, fully defined plan for which release it will be supported, but this is definitely something we are considering. Um, let me see what else do we have here. Um, what is considered remote? Only the cloud, or also another machine on the on the on the same LAN. Um, anything basically that you can connect to the um, to the uh, through the network. So it can be a local machine on the on the same LAN. It doesn't have to be something in the cloud. That's the the the, the remote development model I was showing. Um, that's the feature of uh, Visual Studio Code. That's not a part of Paras of C++ extension. However, our extension uh, works with this development uh, model. Another question, are you using GitHub or GitLab? Um, the presentation I was, I was showing was with uh, GitLab, uh, but this was just an illustration of the CI CD workflow. Um, you can do very same things with, with Jenkins, with GitHub, with, with Bamboo, and with any other um, CI tools. Again, this was just to illustrate um, what you would normally implement in your um, real development. Um, 
another question. How do I use Parasoft to perform static analysis for MATLAB slash Simulink uh, generated C code? Um, this is not any different from static analysis on the, on the regular handwritten uh, C, C++ code. So all you need to do is um, just to open the code in the, um, in the VS Code um, and then uh, specify the information about compilation options. That's a part of the configuration process I was not showing today, but it's, but it's, it's relatively simple um, and it's well documented. So there are no limitations here. Any valid C++ code, including the code generated for, from MATLAB Simulink or other modeling tools can be uh, statically analyzed. Oh, so let's maybe see one more question. Um, can I suppress uh, coding violations and at what levels? Um, actually, this is something I was, I was showing during the demonstration. Um, so when you have a finding in the VS Code editor, you can um, use the drop down, um, uh, drop down uh, menu item to initiate uh, suppressing and then editor will ask you for, um, for adding the comment for the suppression. And with this being done, a special comment in the code will be generated. Um, so you need to commit this um, uh, with your source files. And, and this will be an information that is interpreted during the static analysis by the, by the code analyzer. And this suppressed violation will not be uh, reported. Uh, violations can be also uh, suppressed using the DTP server. So uh, if you are sending results to the Parasol DTP and you review and you triage the results in the, uh, in the Parasol DTP, um, you can also suppress inside DTP and these suppresses um, will be honored by the, the VS Code extension. The violations will, will not be shown. Um, okay, let me see um, if we mm -hmm. have other questions. Um, is this just extension? Is this extension just a linter? Um, no, Parasoft CC++ test is more than just a linter. Um, we do um, follow data and control flow analysis. So um, we can find um, problems um, like runtime problems, like buffer overflows, um, integer overflows, dangling pointer, null pointer dereferencing, all these type of uh, problems, errors can be done. And this, is, and this is done by advanced code analysis by PAPS simulations. Um, okay, I still see we have, we have many, many questions. Um, I believe uh, we will try to answer uh, them um, through the email. Um, so I think we have just enough time now to conclude the webinar. Well, thank you, Miroslav, for uh, a wonderful presentation and uh, going through all of those questions. Now, today's webinar has been recorded and will be made available later today along with the slide presentation. So expect to receive uh, uh, links to the collateral. Also, take a look at our blogs on some of the topics that uh, Miroslav discussed. They provide a lot of technical value and we also have webinars that complement the blogs. Now, please subscribe to our YouTube channel or follow us on Twitter, Facebook, or LinkedIn. And you can also reach us via email at info at parasoft.com. Now, uh, don't forget to visit our website, parasoft.com. You will find additional information and other fantastic solutions uh, that we offer. And it was better yet, um, evaluate our products for yourself. So there's a little uh, bar uh, um, so that you can follow and go ahead and install and get a trial of our product. Anyway, stay safe and healthy, and thank you again for attending. Bye-bye, folks.